Hi guys! <laughs> what was that? Today I wanted to come at you guys with a casual video. Really just wanted to like clear the air and give you guys all the answers that you guys have been wondering. Mm -hmm. I'm having a resurgence right now. Like it is the Emily Lee resurgence era. And I couldn't be more grateful to be honest. I've kind of been having a lot of people comment things like, Oh my god, I used to watch you and I just found you again. How are you doing? What is going on? Did I miss a few chapters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did. And also, I have a lot of new people here who literally know nothing about me. But before we get to the questions, real, real, real quick, this video has a sponsor. So, let's get to it. <laughs> Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Have you been having, like, a rough time lately? I feel like, honestly, there's something in the universe, something in the stars, something in the water even <laughs> that is making us have like a really weird collective rough time lately but today's sponsor can actually help with that BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help you and you can talk to them in a private online environment at your convenience BetterHelp has over 20,000 therapists in their network and there is a broad range of expertise that can give you access to help that might not be available in your area all you have to do is fill out the questionnaire which is super simple and super easy that will help assess your specific needs and match you with a therapist in under under 48 hours then you can schedule your video phone or chat sessions and you can even exchange unlimited messages where everything is confidential <laughs> to be honest I love the convenience of these sessions like I literally do a video session every single week at my desk that's literally right there I found a therapist that I'm very comfortable with and it took some trial and error but honestly BetterHelp has a really good system for that you can request a new therapist at any time with no charge and it's very easy you just click a button you don't even have to be confrontational I've been using BetterHelp for so long like literally years and years at this point and therapy is just one of the best things that I've ever done to help my mental health and just help me in general as a person I feel like I've grown and learned so so much from therapy and to be honest I just like having some Somebody to vent to once a week like literally just somebody that is forced to hear me speak <laughs> I'm so sorry to my therapist. But yeah, I genuinely cannot recommend BetterHelp enough because I've genuinely seen a big change in myself and my life and my mindset since using the service. And I think that that's like all the proof that I really have to give you. So yeah, you can join the 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. And I even have a 10% discount code for you guys. You can use code Emily Lee for 10% off if you want to try out BetterHelp. All the links will be down below. Let's just get back to our regularly scheduled programming okay bye <laughs> hi guys welcome back welcome back to my bed <laughs> let's get cozy i don't even really know where to start there's a lot of questions oh my god let's do a speed round of just like who the fuck is this bitch you know what's your big three astrological astrological signs <laughs> i am a leo sun taurus moon capricorn rising where do you stay and what is your age i live in brooklyn i am from queens new york and i'm 23 years old i'm turning 24 in like two weeks it's real crazy <laughs> a lot of people are asking my body count does it matter like does it matter? Honest question. Will you, knowing my answer, change your life in any way? I don't think so. <laughs> a lot of people want to know how much I smoke and how much I buy. I have cut down a lot and I'm proud of myself because I struggled really bad with weed dependency in the past. I'm not there anymore. Improvement. We love that. But right now, I buy a half a week. Every weekend. Hi, can I have a half? <laughs> <laughs> that's me. But yeah, that's basically what I do. <laughs> All right, let's get into the juiciness. Someone said, <laughs> someone just said, have you ever been treated for depression? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I feel like I've been treated lots of times in lots of different ways. I've tried being on medication, which helped me for a while, then sometimes it didn't help me. Sometimes medications don't work with you and it's a trial and error process. Right now, I am not on any antidepressants, which I kind of am proud of myself, to be honest. I feel like I've been doing good, except like once a month my PMDD kicks my ass and my depression gets really bad, so... 
I gotta figure that out. <laughs> the thing that helps me most is weekly therapy sessions. I've been in therapy since I was 19 years old and I sought it out myself. So it's like I've willingly been in therapy for five years. <laughs> I've also, you know, um, gone to the ER and got, you know, the socks. <laughs> But we're past that now. We're good. <laughs> you guys want to know about my breakup story. My long relationship. You guys know the one. The one I was with for four years. My long-term relationship. You guys want to know what the fuck happened. What is the tea? <sighs> I feel like we were in that relationship for way too long. It could have been six months done, to be honest. I stayed in that relationship because I thought I was good and I thought I was happy. But reality is, like, I just never experienced, like, love and care in my life. So I was like taking bare minimum and thinking that that was like okay Finally then when I like got older and like life life happened like adulting happened I realized like this is not okay <laughs> Also, I want to say I was not perfect in that relationship to be honest I hate that I'm gonna say this and I hope this person never like watches this because I'm going to feel bad if they like hear me say this But I think that that relationship was a rebound for me that just like lasted for four years Like I don't know why that happened i feel like the relationship just was a friendship i feel like we had a really really good friendship the relationship was like so platonic even like sexually it wasn't a vibe like nobody was having fun like it was i mean i wasn't <laughs> I don't know about them and then you know we just got shoved into so much adult stuff like i was on my own i didn't have a place to go we lived together we were together for so long it was just like very adult at a very young age i do not think that he was ready for being an adult like that at all i was forced to be and to like date somebody who's forced to like be on their own and be an adult and like be self-sufficient kind of forces you to take on a little responsibility of them so i kind of think like maybe he didn't deserve to have that responsibility but also we were dating so it was like like, I don't know. It was just a lot. It was a lot. There were parts of my life that made the relationship strained, but also this man treated me bad. I'm just gonna be honest. Like, he was not a loving, affectionate, caring person at all. Like, not empathetic, no emotions, like, silent. So that wasn't fun. <laughs> I also think a really big fault was like difference of maybe like cultures and like how we grew up. I think that a lot of things that I experienced in my life, a lot of trauma, he just literally couldn't understand. Like he lived a very sheltered life. It was hard and I also felt like at a certain point he became a man baby. Like I hate to say it. I don't actually know. If he watches this, he could hear me say this part. I think he was a man baby. I cooked, I cleaned, I did everything. I did everything like I was his mama. Never again will I be some boy's mama. <laughs> any celebs slide into your DMs or anyone exciting, lol. You guys know, I, I'm not gonna say people's names. The DMs have been a little active. Have I been active in the DMs? No, because for some reason, every single man disgusts me recently. But I will say, I dated somebody low-key famous for like a month and I don't even want to say it. He made a really famous song. That's what I will say. Low-key, it's a very New York song. So like when that song comes on, it's a bop. It's a great song. <laughs> but when I hear it, I'm like, ew. <laughs> but um, we're both blocked now, so... That's how that one went. <laughs> oh my god, how regularly do you fake an orgasm? Never. Never in my life have I faked an orgasm. Never have I thought about it. And to be honest, I don't feel bad to tell them that I'm not satisfied. Like, I will make it very clear. I have told people, oh, I wish that there was a vibrator here because, like, I need some extra. <laughs> and, like, that's fine. That's fine. I'm just blunt. I'm just blunt. <laughs> but can we, like, as a collective, stop faking orgasms because it's like why do people do that like why are you trying to save their ego let them know they're doing a bad job get your pleasure satisfied i'm not here to just like sit here i'm here to have a good time <laughs> So they're gonna know if they're doing a good job or not. People wanna know about Tatiana. <laughs> I feel like I can finally talk about it now because the air has been cleared between me and her. I feel like if you've been here a long time, you know Tatiana. Tatiana's been my best friend since childhood. I've always gone through life thinking that she's like my sister, you know? I think for a few years, we definitely had like a weird falling out vibe. I feel like you guys are asking about this because like we've been hanging out more and it's because like, like, we both have talked and like expressed ourselves and just like we're both at a better place in life we were both 
both going through a lot at the same time except like our approaches to things were very different so like where I was going through a rough time and I like wanted her help and I like wanted her you know care and friendship she was going through a hard time and she wanted to be isolated so like for years I thought that I did something to her I was like I don't know what I did to her but like it's cool we're always gonna be friends but maybe we weren't like best friends anymore and that was okay I came to terms with it it took me a while I felt like I lost my best friend it was sad but we talked we cleared the air we both were going through a lot of shit at the same time and it's just like we both had to come to a better point in life so that we can just like reconnect and like feel good again and like we literally hang out now and it's like nothing ever changed like that's always how it is when I see her no matter how long it's been like we'll always like pick up at the same point I'm happy now that there's no friction because I feel like I got my friend back but um yeah there's your answer <laughs> People want to know about my relationship with my parents. I have a strange relationship with both of my parents. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I've been on my own since like 18 years old. And ever since then, it's been very much like my mom got her life, my dad got his life, and I got my life. And that's how we function and you know do I wish I had a better relationship with my parents yeah but I realized like I can only do so much and I need to focus on my happiness or like I'm never gonna be happy I took initiative to create boundaries and do what's best for me so yeah okay let's switch gears people want to know about me and girls people want to know if i've been with a girl if i dated a girl if i'm dating girls right now what's the deal with these girls what's the deal with the girls all right guys pause okay let me say this i accepted my love for women when i was in a long-term relationship with a man so i did not have time to explore there then i got into another relationship with a man and i did not have time to explore there so it's only been about i would say a year that i have been single and more comfortable with my sexuality so i feel nervous <laughs> Like, you know, when you're a teenager and you have your first crush on somebody, that's how I feel. Like, that's the emotion I feel, like a baby. Girls are more intimidating than guys to me. You guys gotta give me a few. I, I love the faith that you have in me. I love the faith, but like, I, I've only been kind of like out and single for a year and like 75% of that time I was healing. So it's like, now is the time where I would be, you know, like seeing what's up, but um, I, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest. I'm nervous. I wish that I had the opportunity when I was younger to explore more because I feel like now I'm gonna be 24 and I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, okay, guys are so easy. Guys are so easy, so simple, and dumb. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Maybe. So like, how do you go from that to girls who are literally like beautiful, ethereal, amazing, talented, pretty, cute, smart. <laughs> how, how do you jump from that? Of course you're gonna be intimidated. But yeah, maybe one day I will have stories for you guys, but until now I just feel like I'm a baby. I'm waiting for the right time. I want it to be natural and I don't want to force it. I'm open to receiving, but I'm not like actively searching because I'm just in a very like single mood lately. Okay, I feel like that leads us to this next question somebody asked. They want to know updates on sneakies, boyfriends, girlfriends, etc. What's up? Okay. I am in such a single Pringle mood. I don't know what is wrong with me. I get the ick so fast. I don't want to talk to anybody. I try so hard to talk, but I do not make it past one day of the talking phase. It's so hard for me to be attracted to people. I don't even like going on dates. Like, I don't have the energy. Like, I literally don't have, like, the mental capacity to, like, invest my time into another person right now. I don't know why, which is why I love a sneaky. And I'm gonna be honest, I haven't even been meeting a new sneaky lately because I of the same thing it's so hard for me to be attracted to somebody I have my same sneakies that I had months ago the thing about me when I find somebody that I like and that does what I want them to do and satisfies me and makes me feel pretty and rolls me up I keep them that brings us actually to another question I'm getting like so honest somebody said how many sneaky links are you rotating and who's your fave <laughs> Who's your fave is what got me. I'm not gonna lie. I like to have three because then it's like, that's enough for me. If one is busy, I got two others. But right now I have two and it's bothering me because I'm getting a little bored. 
But as I said, it's hard for me to be attracted to people. And also, I like their personalities. Like, I have a good time. I laugh. Like, I want to laugh. Like, entertain me somehow. Make me laugh. Listen to good music with me. Something. As for who's my fave, I don't got a fave right now. They're on even territory. I'm bored. I'm bored. I could drop them at any second. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that would be so fucked up. But you see, I feel like even with sneakies, there has to be some kind of respect. Like, you need to respect me. I respect you. When we have our time together, it's a good vibe. And, you know, when we're not together, like, do you and I'ma do me. Period. Oh, also, by the way, PSA, have safe sex. I feel like I shouldn't have to say it, but, like, some people need to hear it. Have safe sex. What? This question made me want to throw up. Have you ever gone back to an ex or hooked up with an ex briefly? Never in my life have I gone back to an ex. And I will pat myself on the back for that one. For me, once we break up, we break up. That's it. We're never getting back together. You lost your chance. <laughs> That's how I feel. If I got to the point where I'm done with you to the point of breaking up, why would I ever want to see you again? Literally all of my exes disgust me in some way, shape, or form. One of my exes, if I see him in the street, so many emotions run through my mind. What age did you lose your virginity? 19, actually. I don't know if people think 19 is like on the later side, but like I'm actually kind of happy that I waited until 19. Does your family feel some type of way about you smoking? My mom doesn't care. My dad doesn't like it, I don't think, but he never says anything about it, so we just don't speak about it. <laughs> my grandma kind of hates it, but at this point, she just had to accept it. <laughs> But yeah, nobody really gives me shit. As I said, I've been on my own for like five years. So like, what are they gonna tell me? I pay my bills, I pay my rent, I've done everything. I've been self-sufficient and independent for like a lot of my life. So what could they really tell me? <laughs> Would you ever go back in time to hook up with someone again? Cause it was just that good. Only one person and look, I'm a heartless bitch right now. It's crazy because nobody can crack me. Like I I'm almost getting scared that like, I'm not gonna be able to like love somebody again. But that's another, that's another story. People do not have holds on me. People do not have grasp on me. It's very easy for me to like let go of a person. But yeah, there is one person that I wish I could go back in time and hook up with again. And it's kind of depressing because yes, I want to hook up with them again but it's more so like i want to experience them again and it's like low-key sad because i don't know if i will ever get that opportunity again but like would i welcome it if it came to me yeah <laughs> why i don't fucking know and it was none of my exes by the way so don't even play that don't even think that <laughs> oh will you be doing more club appearances okay if you guys don't know i'm doing club appearances now <laughs> i just hosted an event it's actually a monthly event it's called euphoria it's in brooklyn so yeah go follow their instagram because they're gonna be having events and i'm probably gonna be at them <laughs> so yeah i did my first hosting job it was very fun here was my outfit it was so much fun i i had a fitting i got dressed up and i felt like a, a little celebrity it was very cute but yeah i do hope to do more appearances and hosting i'm actually really trying to figure out something for my birthday which is august 14th so like just be on the lookout but yeah i'm happy that i started doing this because i feel like it's like very me it just feels fun and it feels so right to me and i just like love it so i hope that i have more opportunities to do like different hosting gigs in the future oh let's end on this okay will you ever release slash give some type of access to your old videos so many people ask me this question and i don't know i don't know how i would do it a lot of the reason why my videos are private is because a lot of my viral videos were fast fashion hauls and i don't want to promote that at all like i don't want these companies to be getting free promotion from my old videos also like i don't know i just don't want them to be out i feel like i was younger i feel like now i'm a different person it was so long ago it's like when you like private your facebook photos you know <laughs> I don't think I will ever release them again. I'm not sure. I haven't thought about it much. I have all the videos. I literally still have all the videos. But like, I just don't think that they represent me. I don't think they're a good representation of me. I'm not really proud of half of them because I was like not even editing good. I can't even watch them. Like I watch them and I'm like, this video sucks. So it's like, why would people want them again? But I get it. People like the nostalgia. People like the comfort. People just want to see it. But I don't think I want to share it. <laughs> and Loki, I think that that's 
valid. But maybe one day, who knows? Maybe like a Patreon vibe or like a, an unlisted thing where I just give you guys links and it's like very hush hush secret. I don't know. We will see. But yeah, those were all of the questions. I think I just want to end this off by saying thank you. Like, thank you guys for like hearing my stories and being so receptive, like especially on Instagram. Like I did a little reel explaining like my mental health and my social media career like for the past like 10 years and people were so nice like in general people were so nice even when I asked you guys to ask me juicy questions so many people were like I don't want to be invasive I respect your privacy I want you to be comfy but yeah I appreciate you all so much even when I get messages of somebody saying that my journey inspired them or you know me sharing my trauma made them feel like they're not alone like those mean so much to me because I've been trying to figure out what what is my place in this world right I've always felt like I want to help people and when I was like figuring out college and stuff I thought that maybe I wanted to be a teacher or a children's therapist or a therapist in general or a school counselor like I wanted to do something to help people and give advice I think people who have gone through a lot always turn out to be the people who want to help people and I think that like my content is helping people and that's very fulfilling to me like I think that is what makes me feel good about posting content that it, it could help people or inspire people or you know if I make a video about something hard like abusive relationships and I have a hundred comments saying that it helped them it's like I just helped a hundred people something that I said in my video or sharing my story helped them somehow and that is all that I want that is fulfilling to me of course I'm an artist of course I'm a creative and of course I like aesthetically pleasing things that will always be like me to my core but if I could do all of that while also helping people duh I'm gonna fucking do it that's why I love talking about taboo topics like weed sex casual sex masturbation <laughs> all of it like I love making things normal because these things are normal and we should not feel ashamed I just want us to feel like we are empowered and we are together and we are not alone and you can survive anything so thank you guys for giving me a platform to do that i will always be grateful <laughs> but yeah i talked for long enough let's end this video let's say thank you to BetterHelp once again for sponsoring the link and my discount code will be down below but yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video i love you so much bye